The King of Rock and Roll, Elvis Presley. You might have seen the movie, but how much of his origin was sensationalized? There is no doubt that Elvis was unique. His stage presence and his skill as an entertainer were well above the standards of his generation and even still hold their own against the star power of artists today. The question is, what went into the mix to make Elvis? How did he get his start? Elvis Aaron Presley was born January 8, 1935, in Tupelo, Mississippi. His first name was his father's middle name. He wasn't born at any hospital, but instead at home. He was the survivor of twins. Jesse Aaron Presley was born 35 minutes before Elvis, but he was delivered stillborn. His family was devoted in Christianity, and his family attended a Southern-style church. Southern churches are not the same as churches found in the North, and part of his musical inspiration came from the music he heard heard at such a church. It's believed that Elvis found his drive for wealth from the troubles of his childhood. His father was arrested in 1938 for check fraud and would spend eight months in jail. During this time, Elvis and his mother would have to move in with relatives and depend on them. Contrary to the movie, Elvis sang for the praise of his first grade teacher and then again sang the song Old Ship October 3rd, 1945 at a contest hosted by the Mississippi Alabama Fair and placed fifth at the early age of 10. For his birthday, a few months after his contest, he was given a guitar. He had asked for a bicycle or a rifle, but his talents were too good to waste from the perspective of those that loved him. Elvis wasn't short on people willing to try to teach him guitar. His pastor and his uncles included among those. For some reason, Elvis just couldn't find his confidence in his playing skills compared to his singing. He learned it to a moderate level, but it was a slow, steady learning pace that he would have to take time to learn. In 1946, he would start a new school, and there he would be outcast some, and when he would bring his guitar to school, he would be teased for his taste in music. Elvis was entranced by the music played by Mississippi Slim at the local radio station, where Slim had his radio show. His brother, who went to the new school with Elvis, would often drag Elvis along to visit. When Elvis was 12, Slim would schedule him to perform on air, and the first time, Elvis fell due to stage fright, but was able to perform the following week successfully. In November 1948, Elvis would get a new scene when his family moved to Memphis, Tennessee. Elvis's family were still very poor, and to make matters worse, Elvis only got a C in music in his 8th grade year, and his music teacher discouraged him from singing, saying that he had no aptitude for it. The next day, he brought his guitar with him and sang a local hit for her. It didn't seem to change her mind much at all. Elvis was shy about his performing, and probably only did it to try to change her mind. In 1950, Elvis would find a kindred with some other boys in the area, and would play guitar with Lee Denson who would teach him a few things about the instrument. Two other boys would join Dorsey and Johnny Burnett. They would gather and play often. During this time, Elvis would have many jobs, trying to make some money from his local stores and factories. Working and playing music casually with his friends would consume his time at this age. His junior year of high school, Elvis would more openly show his taste in music, leaning into the blues scene found in the area and would often be around Beale Street. He would hone his craft and overcome his fear of the stage soon enough. His senior year, April 1953, he would perform at the Humus Annual Minstrel Show and sing Till I Waltz Again With You while playing his guitar. His confidence was much improved at this point and for the first time in his high school life, he was popular. Even at this stage, however, Elvis could not read sheet music and was only playing by ear. His talents fell into the range of the creative, not the academic. He would seek and enjoy blues and gospel singing from from both sides of the Memphis music scene, adoring the white singers and the black singers without reserve. By the end of 1953, despite his hardships, if anyone asked Elvis what he was going to do after high school, he would proudly proclaim music. It didn't take Elvis long to hit his fame. He was able to cut a track with Sun Records in Memphis, and his music would start zooming out over the radio play and around the region faster than anyone expected. Elvis would later say that he was only trying to make an acetate for his mother as a birthday gift so she could play his singing whenever she wanted. The owner of Sun Records, Sam Phillips, asked him about his music and his sound. He asked him who he thought he might sound like, and he said, I don't sound like anybody. 
Sam Phillips would agree and had his assistant write down his name and note, Good Ballad Singer. By 1954, Elvis cut his second track for Sun Records and then he failed an audition with a local group called The Songfellows. They would say he couldn't do harmony. After that, another setback came when his friend suggested he try to join a band of a professional named Eddie Bond. Bond would tell him to stick to truck driving because at the time he had a job driving truck for an electric company. July 5th, 1954, Elvis was messing around with a few other guys in the sound booth at Sun Records when Sam heard them. He had them back up on the track and recorded it. The single, That's Alright, a cover from 1946, only performed by Elvis, would play three days later on a radio show, and the station would take call after call asking about the group or any details that could be told. They would record more songs using a special sound Sam Phillips would use that helped their musical style. He called it Slapback. This would prove to be the first big break that started the career that turned a small boy born in Mississippi and migrated to Tennessee into the international superstar known as Elvis Presley. <laughs> 